sanctify. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered for my necessities and for those who are with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus and how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Peace be unto you, the subject in Daniel. And to thy spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Yours, 
and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture met might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak into the world, that they may have my, my joy fulfilled in themselves. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sprost me come. It would be easy and emotionally fulfilling to talk about what happened last night and during the past week here in America concerning rioting that has been going on. It would be easy to be angry about various parts of our society. I did that on 95 driving up here this morning, so I got that out of my system. But the hard thing today, during this Sunday, this last Sunday before Pentecost, is another story. And I want us to know this story because it concerns you and I, this community, Everyone that is throwing stones and is violent, everyone who is peaceful, the police, everybody in this world, this story concerns. The place is the Roman Empire. 25 years before the story truly starts, the Christian church is persecuted to its utmost utmost until the Russian Revolution. Millions are killed, churches destroyed. It looks very bad for Christianity. Then all of a sudden, in 312, Christianity receives a champion. Someone that would further their cause. Not become a Christian yet. That is just legend. But he gives religious freedom to Christians and other non-violent faiths in the Roman Empire. And then he waits to consolidate his power in Rome and especially in the East. And this all comes together in 323 A.D. But the church had become complacent, and the church had come into some kind of chaos about who believed what, and who believed this creed, and who had this power to do this, and who had this right to do that. And there was fighting in the streets. And it looked grim as it had 20 years before for the Christian church. So what happened? Well, we say what happened every time we meet on Sunday. We say the Nicene Creed, which did not come out of the air, 
did not come out of the mouth of one particular saint. But it came out of the work of 318 bishops that were called to Nicaea, a little town across from Istanbul today. And they were called because they were being bad. They weren't called because they wanted to get together to do good things. There was a serious internal fight in the church on who Jesus was. Not that he existed or not, but who is he? Is, cre is he created like one of us? Just a creature that God bestowed a blessing upon? Or is he the son of God, fully God and fully man? come to save the world. And people argued about this like they argued about what's going on today 25 blocks from here. People were killed. People said the wrong things. They made the wrong choices. Most of the politicians didn't know what to do. Sound familiar? Until one person stood up and said, we will have a council. He was sole emperor by then. He was not a Christian yet, but he did something that I hope every mother in this room will smile at. He listened to his mom. Her name was Helen, and she was a Christian. And he knew that he would tie his personal power his political power in the empire with the Christian church. He made that known, and he calls the council in Nicaea in, three, uh, in uh, 325 AD. And he wants the bishops to do one thing. Settle down, talk to each other civilly, and decide on doing something constructive. All the rest is legend. So they settled down. And they talked about the easy stuff first. Like if a bishop wants to travel from one city to another, how does that work? Or if your priest wants to go from this diocese to another diocese, how does that work? Or something even simpler, we have three really super archbishops in the Christian church, the Bishop of Rome, the Bishop of Alexandria, the Bishop of Antioch. Should they be given some kind of precedence over all the other bishops? Because they were all equal. And they should, and they were. <coughs> Don't kneel on Sundays, because Sunday is the Lord's day a canon of the Council of Nicaea, and so on. So the church comes together to get these little things done, called by the emperor, Constantine was his name, if you didn't get it. And then they work on the big thing. And we say it every Sunday, we say it every time we baptize someone, we say it during Great Lent, during the Complins that we do, and we probably should say it every night of our lives. Because the biggest question that I have as a priest, one of the biggest ones is, what do I say when someone comes to me and asks me what we believe in? Well, you said, which is what the fathers of the Council of Nicaea say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and so on. That creed is what you said. When someone asks me about Orthodox Christianity, who is another Christian, who has judgment on their mind, I spent 22 years with them, 
many, many chaplains love to judge other chaplains. I didn't have any problem in talking to them. I brought out the creed and said, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Can you fit into that? If you can't, no discussion. If you can and want to discuss it, I will talk about theology with you. When someone comes to me to be a catechumen, and if you want to spend 55 minutes of rip-torn fun, we've got, a, we've got a new adult education thing out. The subdeacon has watched it all already. He laughed probably for the whole thing. But it's about catechumens. What do the catechumens do at the end? They memorize the creed, the Nicene Creed. It's about who Jesus is and how he and the Father and indirectly the Holy Spirit are related to each other. How they all work together. Because this was the fight. So it was more important than the church being in chaos and the bishops not behaving themselves. It was more important than who the chief bishop was. Because guess what? None of the Greek fathers of the church, of the bishops there who were from Asia Minor and Greece, cared who the first bishop was. What they cared about was who was Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to care about today on this Sunday. So he's fully God and fully man, of one essence with the Father, homiousios. I won't mention too many uh, foreign um, names. It means the same stuff, the same essence as the Father. Not created, not made up, not co-equal with the devil, and all the other heresies that we had heard in the church for 300 years, and guess what, brothers and sisters in Christ, we hear today, now, the same heresies. Who is Jesus? Who is the devil? Does the Holy Trinity even exist? What is reality? All of these things are connected with Nicaea. So what happened? Well, being human beings, Arius was shot down, excommunicated. This was the priest that supported the group that didn't think Jesus, the one that Jesus was created. He was sent back to Alexandria, and he created his own little, you know, heretical church. And people believed in him. Luckily, the head of the council, uh, Patriarch Alexander, Patriarch Alexander of Alexandria, try to say that fast, it's like, wow, uh, had excommunicated him. But it took the church 50 years to work this out. And then in 381, they had the second council and completed the creed. 50 years. And to prove how much one person may affect something like that, Patriarch Alexander's deacon was a young man of 20 years old who went with his patriarch to the council. 50 years later, he, re he becomes the most venerated hierarch bishop and theologian in the church. His name was Athanasius, and his title was Athanasius the Great. There ain't too many the greats among saints in the Orthodox Church. He was the one who came up against Arius in the council and fought with him verbally about who Jesus was. Now, what does this mean to me and you 
in 2020. It means everything. Because if we don't know who Jesus is, then we have no anchor. If we do not know who Jesus is, then we have no choices. If we do not know who Jesus is, then we cannot love our brothers and sisters. I didn't say like, I said love. There's a vast difference between the two. Philadelphia, that's liking people, okay? That's what it's named after. Liking your brother and sister. Loving your brother and sister in a certain way. Agape is another word for love. That's the word that we're looking for. Is to love your brother and sister. No matter if you agree with them or not. We have a brother and sister duo here. I'm sure they disagree one or two times. But I know they love each other. And that's what's important. So it is all about God's love for us. And it's all about our love for God. Now, this is not a huggy, squeezy thing. Number one, we can't do that because of the virus. But this is an internal thing as a member of the Orthodox Church for the last 1,695 years. Almost cannot comprehend that time. That's how long it's been between now and Nicaea. So think about who Jesus is. Go to the creed today. Oh, I don't need to tell you to do that. We're going to do that anyway, aren't we? And what we will be reading in the beginning up to the Holy Spirit will be what they worked on. And think about those words and what they mean to you as an Orthodox Christian. Think about those words and what they mean to others who are not. And think about those words when they relate to God's love, total unconditional love for you and for me and for this community and for all men and women. Think about who Jesus is to you. Is he just a prophet? Is he just someone that we read about in the gospel? Or is he fully God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? He's the Son. And fully man, just like us so that God could relate to us and ultimately save us from this sinful world. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
again, we pray for this country and president also of parties and for the armed forces everywhere. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy orthodox patriarchs and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy house and for all our fathers and brothers of the orthodox who parted this life before us especially for the newly departed servants of God, Margaret, the Archpriest Paul, and Matthew, and all, the, all those who have succumbed to the COVID virus, who here in our own world lie asleep in the Lord. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, Matushka, Alexandra, Alexandra, Mary, Matushka, Kenya, Don, Emily, Jane, Mary, Grace, Tanya, Ronald, Mary, David, Sharon, Olga, Brother Deacon, Joseph, Albert, Sheba, Joseph, Bridget, Jennifer, Tracy, Haley, Gillian, Vincent, Alexander, Danielle and her newborn child, Owen, Catherine and her newborn child, Sophia, Maria and her unborn child, Robert and Earl, Fania and Michael, but Mother Catherine, Matushka, Jennifer, and Priest Jason, James, Peter, Mary, the Mighty Arch Priest Gerald, John, the Priest Joseph and Spiridon, and all those who are affected with the coronavirus, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable house, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy.
pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions. Let us ask of the Lord.
who came into the world to save sinners of whom I am first. I believe also that this is truly that of most pure body, and this is truly that of the most precious blood. Therefore, I pray thee, have mercy upon me and forgive me my transgressions, both voluntary and voluntary, of word and of deed, committed in knowledge or ignorance, and to make me worthy to partake of that condemnation of the most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical suffer, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant. I will not speak of thy mysteries to thine enemies, neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, or like a thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment or to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen. <laughs> Jacob protects precious Holy Mind, brother of the Lord God, and Sarah Jesus Christ, which did his sins.
people and bless thine inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house. Glorify them in return by thy divine power and forsake us not to put our hope in thee. The peace of thy world, to thy church, and to thy clergy, to all those in civil authority, and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee who ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and unto ages of ages. from us into heaven and sets at the right hand of God the Father, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother and lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, our patron saint, of the holy and all laudable apostles, of St. John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose liturgy we celebrate today, of 
the fathers of the first ecumenical council of the church in Nicaea in 325, especially among them St. Nicholas of Myra in Nicaea and St. Ath Athanasius the Great of Alexandria, whom we commemorate today, our Holy Father Herman of Alaska, Wonder Work of America, of the newly canonized St. Sophronia of, es of Essex, of St. Sebastian of San Francisco, St. John Maximovich, and all the North American saints of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joe, came in honor of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for he is good and must and God. Christ is in our midst. He is all the shadow. And surprise me, God. We are in, as I told you last, whatever it was, last week, uh, we're in this sort of between time, between Ascension and Pentecost, it's the time of the Ascension. We read the Ascension Traparian today a number of times. So we're in that time of the church calendar as we await and prepare for the Holy Feast of Pentecost. Uh, let's do the easy part first. Marissa, birthday? I think so. We have, we have other notes. Christine, Chappie's daughter. Really? It, really? Oh, and um, Aaron and Zara's birthday. And Zara. Yeah. And Aaron. So you got that? Marissa, Zara. Here, here, here you go. You're the man. Yes? Um, the reader Mark and Tushin anniversary is tomorrow. We should celebrate. Grant, O Lord, a peaceful life, health, salvation, and furtherance of all good things to your servants of God, Christine, Zara, Aaron, the reader Mark, and Thecla on their anniversary, and grant them many years. So, if you like anything else in the church, if you have a question about the door warden, and that includes the temperature gauge, the mask, questions that are asked to people when they come to church, and so on, you obviously talk to the priest, right? No. You talk to the chief door warden. You talk to her. She has all the answers. She's going to be great. Perfect. Perfect. Your brother likes it, too. Uh, I will be coming out with probably two extraordinarily important, I've said this like 10 times in the last three months, really, really important uh, emails this week. One will detail what we're doing exactly, uh, the people that are coming. Uh, it looks like we will be, be able to get to the 25 with no problem. Um, and we should go to yellow on Thursday or Friday, unless, uh, for those of you that have been under a rock, I was sort of under a rock yesterday, I didn't understand that 95, uh, Interstate 95 was closed in Wilmington because of a riot, not because of the usual Del Dot 
foolishness of fixing the road. Um, so we are in a curfew time in Philadelphia, as far as I know, for tonight too, uh, at eight o'clock in the evening. Um, there is, could be a chance that we will not go from red to yellow this week. That could happen. Uh, I will tell you when I know, okay? If that happens, then we go back to the 10 as usual. If we go to yellow, then we're full, full, full force. I said full like eight times. We're going to do right, the plan, our plan for over, okay, at 25. I haven't had any other direction from the bishop on this. Um, we have to sit and wait. We pray for peace. Uh, if you don't understand praying for peace, I'd like you to go back to the Divine Liturgy and look at it 25 times in the text. We pray for peace in the Divine Liturgy. So people may think that oh, all, those, all those crazy Orthodox, all they do is pray weird things. Yeah, weird things like peace and love and tranquility and loving God, you know, all that other weird stuff. Anyway, so please continue to do that. Pray for peace and courage and discernment, which is a very big word, but a, an important one today. Uh, for those of us that are old enough, we do not want to repeat what happened in the late 1960s. Uh, a number of us are that old and remember watching our cities burn. And that, we don't need to have that happen any more than it has already. So please pray for peace. Pray for all of us in this church as we go from yellow, from um, yellow, yellow, from red to yellow. Uh, this is going to be a big change. Um, it's going to be hard on a lot of you. Oh, by the way, A plus coming to communion today. Except, what problem did we have here today, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. <laughs> Aren't you glad I spent 22 years in the military? Can I get the three of you to come up here, please? I'm not embarrassing you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. She's not moving. She's not moving. She doesn't like me anymore. I'm really, I'm hurt. So, everybody came to communion perfectly. You wait here until the other person's done, you walk up. But, they did this. Okay, so you have to be, you have to be back. So what's going to happen here is people are now. You three, you yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we're going to have little bows here. All right, that's where you stand. See, it's our fault. We didn't have the bows. Okay, that is right, Dan. See, Dan ran away already. Right. Oh, there. It is. <laughs> all right, so back up a little bit. He'll be back up to like this bow. All right. So this is what it will look like. What's this look like to you? To anybody that's shopped in the last four weeks? <laughs> It looks like Home Depot, right? <laughs> Except there's no little hand on the ground. Okay, I'm not putting the hand on the ground. All right, so there'll be a bow at each place we need to stand in. Okay, so that is the six feet. Thanks to uh, the n and it was beautiful today. And you know, I could get you a job. That singing job, you know, once it comes up. Thank you, it was beautiful. Uh, okay, so this is what we need to do. Chief um, Door Ward. Chief, this is what it's supposed to look like for communion. Okay, and also, this is what it's supposed to look like for coming to the cross. We're not venerating the cross. You're coming, we're bowing at each other. This is what it needs to look like, okay? Then when you go downstairs, I'm not looking at you. All right, I expect you to be good people, good adults, be safe with each other, okay? Any questions about this? Okay, we're gonna have a little piece of tape, a little ribbon in each place where people can sit. All right, don't sit anywhere else. If you need to get up to go to the bathroom or whatever, go back to the same seat again, okay, please. Families may sit together. I know I'm repeating. I want to repeat and repeat and repeat. Lots of times. OK? 
Okay? We should have no problem in sitting 25 people in this church in a week. Your priest file will probably faint when he sees you all together. It's either cry or faint. So it would be so nice to see at least that many of us together. Are there any questions about logistics or sending more things out in email? Read your email this week. Some of you don't. Oh, Father, I haven't read my email in 10 days. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. This is the 10 days to do it, okay? So read your email. Any other questions? Any other comments? Also, when you go to communion, I, I have to... Oh, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, don't use the cloth. Yeah, you're not using the cloth. Your mouth is being wiped by the deacon. Please. That is his job. He will do that. That is his function. Secondly, I know it's hard for Slavs. We have a hard time doing this. But you've got to open your mouths up wide. All right? And lean back a little bit. Just like this and go. Okay? Okay? Some people, I know some of you have real... Okay, I understand that. But open it up as far as you can, because I have to get the spoon in, dump it, not hit your teeth. You know, I've got, there's some logistic stuff going on here, you know? I've got to get all that done and, and have it come out. You're really good on not butting down on it anymore, that's good. But uh, your mouth has to be open a little bit more. Uh, for those of you that aren't here, where are you? Uh, you gotta take communion differently, okay? We will talk about it on Sunday. No joke. Okay? Thank you. Um, anybody else? Thank you again, choir. Thank you. Your chief um, miss. Good to see you. And our guest today, Dave Manning. Welcome, Manning. Good to see you again. David, good to see you from the wilds of New Jersey. Yes? What? The announcement. Oh, the announcement. Yeah, I'm holding it, too. Um, we had an announcement from St. Herman's Cemetery. Cemetery, yeah, really. That's what we used to call our cemetery. Uh, seminary on their 47th commencement exercises via Zoom on, on May 10th. So I would like to see that, but I didn't know they were having it. Um, so they awarded a number of diplomas and, C and they did CPE things, which I don't think our other cemeteries do that. Seminaries do that. So there is much information on here about St. Hermes that we've been sponsoring. And they also thanked Father. Did they retire, Father John? Oh yeah, they, they no, Father John Dunlop is still the deacon. Good, which is good. So um, it is on here. Did I miss something else on here? So we're gonna leave this downstairs for everybody to read. Since we've been we supported great greatly St. Herman's Cemetery. Cemetery. <laughs> Seminary. I'm sorry, St. Herman's. I'm sorry. It's a beautiful. I'm the only one that's been there from here. It's beautiful. So, okay. Thank you. I don't want to lose that. Thank you. Anyone else? Christ is in a minute.